What's up, Dart people? We are in the Dart language tour on control flow statements, and we're going to go through if and else. Uh, control flow statements is typically what I would call conditional logic. Um, you know, if something's true, go ahead and do it. If it's not, don't do it. That's that's pretty much it. Uh, when you have a process flow diagram, let's see. You can have conditional, and let's see what that looks like. Um, yeah. Something like one of these. What are they giving us? All right, so this is what, um, in a process flow diagram, what um, conditional logic looks like. It's usually this little um, baseball plate kind of thing. Uh, switch is on. If it's not, go check this, right? So you have this this sort of like process, this flow that you go down, um, and you're able to control that flow, uh, which is why they call it control flow statements. <clears throat> and there's different ways to do that in Dart. Okay. Uh, if and else are very common. Um, we use these in uh, Ruby. For while do while break and continue these sort of things we don't really use in Ruby. We have other ways like we have enumerables where we say collection dot each. Um, we don't really use the for loop and while and do whiles. Uh, also, we don't really do break and continue that much. Maybe there's just not a lot of use cases for it because I don't manually control the, the the flow of stuff. I just operate on every object that I have typically. Okay, um, yeah. Switching case, um, what is this called in other programming languages? Um, let me see if Wikipedia, it does, there we go. All right, so switch statements are kind of like um, if and else statements. Uh, it's just a different way to do it, it's more clean sometimes depending on what the condition is um, okay uh, there is so switch case switch case uh, case win so there's different ways to um, use that in different programming languages but for dart it's switch and case finally um, Okay, the uh, last type of control flow statement is assert, um, where if it's not true, it kind of causes your program to abruptly end. All right, so be careful using that. Um, you can also use try, catch, and throw statements, um, but that will be explained on its own in exceptions. So let's look at if and else. Okay, it says there's an optional else statement. Um, so if statements and else if, um, like, I mean, they're all optional if you want control flow or not, if you want conditional logic. Um, but if you use elf, else, sorry, if by itself, you don't necessarily need else if or even else, okay? Um, let's look at this. So I already took uh, this idea that they gave us in, please format correctly, thank you. I already um, took the example and defined, for example, this function uh, is raining, and I just said, hey, it's true. Um, but for example, um, this, this function that returns a Boolean uh, could make an API call to some kind of weather service, and then you would return um, whatever that brings back, if it's raining or not. Uh, maybe you have some input about a, um, you know, some integer like a, a zip code or something like that, and then you use that. Um, right now we're just explicitly saying true because what I want to show is that uh, this part right here, um, you can just have an if statement, okay? Uh, U.bringRaincoat, okay? Here's our U class. We have a bring raincoat method that we've defined up here. Um, we instantiate an instance of U. That way we're able to call U.bringRaincoat. Um, and when we run it, it says, I'm bringing my raincoat. And if you want to be a stickler for grammar, we'll escape that single quote and say, I'm bringing my raincoat. All right, and there we go. Um, so like I say, um, 
format, it automatically puts it here. Uh, sometimes you'll see people do this, right? Um, maybe that stays like that. Okay, so I've seen this before where you have, it's a little bit different. <laughs> it still runs, okay? Um, the only thing is, is that the, the blocks are on their own line. Okay, else if that, do that. Uh, but I'm just gonna reformat it there, and this is typically how you'll see it written, where this next condition is written between the, the following block. All right, if it's raining, bring a raincoat, else if it's snowing, uh, wear a jacket. Uh, otherwise, if neither of those turn out to be true, put the top down, because it's not raining or snowing, uh, and that's what you want to do to your car. And we just have a car class up here. So, um, just did some stuff to clean up this example that the Dart Docs gave us. Okay, um, one thing to note about Dart is that you can't have uh, truthiness or falsiness. In other languages, um, like the number one is truthy, but zero is falsy. Um, in Ruby, an empty hash like this uh, would be falsy, but I think like in JavaScript, it's truthy. Um, so remember in Dart, everything that that you use inside of the conditional uh, inside these mandatory parentheses okay so it is raining it has to actually return a boolean value there is no truthy or falsy okay um, it needs to be boolean like that um, right that was the take-home message there um, again, maybe you don't know what to do with yourself if, if it's not raining or snowing. This is still a completely valid, valid thing here. You know, I could say it's not raining. Um, okay, if it's snowing, we're going to wear a jacket, so that's true. Um, did you notice how whenever raining was true, um, once, once it encountered a true statement, it executed the following code and then quit the rest of the program. Anything else that came afterwards didn't matter. Um, so the order in which you structure uh, your evaluations or you know these these expressions in here um, that matters um, because it's only going to say wear a jacket um, when it's not raining. All right. Um, Sometimes you don't need an else if, you need an actual like two ifs, uh, because you need this to always check. Like maybe it is raining, but it's also snowing. If that's the case, bring a raincoat uh, and bring a jacket, right? Um, <laughs> and maybe, you know, that, that covers you in both cases. I'm bringing my raincoat, I'm wearing a jacket. Um, okay, so else if, two different words. Um, in some programming languages, it does this, where it's it's like one word where um, the else loses its E. Okay. Uh, finally, if none of that is the case, we don't need another condition. We just say else. Um, not sure what to do. Okay. Um, Let's say that that's false, and that's false. Now we don't know what to do. Okay. Um, so again, unlike JavaScript, conditions must use Boolean values, nothing else. That's what that means, um, is whatever this resolves to inside the condition must be true or false. Um, I don't even think you can let it resolve to null. Okay. Yeah, you can't, like, it, it literally has to be true or false. And you see how here I'm hard coding true in, um, so that, that bring raincoat runs, I can hard code false. Um, 
And of course, when something's hard-coded false, that will never run. That's the warning we're getting there. Uh, finally, we want to be a little bit more dynamic and run a function to determine um, at runtime or when this is encountered in the program uh, if it's raining. Okay. So that is um, that's the gist of um, if still uh, if statements. <clears throat> Something else you can do is you can convert these into uh, ternary statements. Um, and that's where you use a little bit of a different syntax. Um, and it goes something like this. So I'm going to convert the thing at the bottom to a ternary operator. I'll say, is it raining? Uh, do this thing. You bring raincoat. Else, you know. Let's say um, let's say we don't want to have this this middle step about snowing. Then we could just say print not sure what to do. Or I think it was what car put the top down something like that. Put top down. Okay. And now oops. Now I want to comment all of this out. So um, is it raining? Bring a raincoat. Otherwise, put the top down and semicolon. Okay, this is the same thing as down here for the first uh, and, and last um, expressions. Okay, we're putting the top down because uh, is raining is false. Let's suppose it is raining though. So is raining is true. Uh, that resolves to true. Uh, so now we execute bring raincoat. Um, if we wanted to, let's take a look at this again. Um, if we wanted to consider the is snowing, then what we need to do is say, um, I think just put everything like this, is snowing. So it gets its own little thing, right? U dot wear jacket, otherwise um, car dot Put top down. Okay, and the, this whole guy gets um, a semicolon at the end. And I don't, I don't think you need one right there in a ternary statement. Okay, so this guy is kind of like nested. So if raining is false, okay, let's make it false. Uh, we're not going to bring a raincoat. Then it falls into here. Okay, it does the things that's in the parentheses. So it does its own little nested ternary statement. Is it snowing? Wear a jacket. Otherwise, put the top down. So it's going to do exactly what this is doing down here. Okay, um, Those are false, so we're putting the top down. Cool. Um, that is the gist of control flow statements for if and else. Um, I think that's all I wanted to say about that for now. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Otherwise, uh, next time we'll jump into for loops. See you then.